السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين Brothers and sisters, I hope you're all well. Whoever is watching this live and whoever will watch this later, be it Allah al Um I think a few nights ago um, we spoke about some marriage advice and some general advice which um, I wanted to give at that time. Um, and so, what I want to do today, inshallah. Um, is I want to carry on from where we left off and just give a general um, marriage advice because I had a lot of people messaging me uh, after that last video asking me certain questions and things like that. So um, I, you know, I, I think we mentioned some warning signs for the sisters to look out for. So now what I want to do is really talk about compatibility. About 10 years ago, 15 years ago, if you would have come to me and said that, you know, compatibility is really important, I would have taken the opinion and I would have said, you know what, as long as two people have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as long as two people fear Allah uh, and they, uh, you know, they have good character, then they will be compatible in all ways in general. Um, but now, having grown in experience, having made mistakes myself, having... Uh, learn from the mistakes of others, having uh, been involved in many different, uh, you know, family feuds and uh, other such uh, things. Um, you know, I I take a totally I take I take a totally different uh, approach, um, and so I think that compatibility now is really really important, um, and I think that we need to go uh, into it more. Be ibn Allah Taala, and so I've broken down compatibility into five main. Uh, categories so broken down compatibility into five main categories okay uh, and so we're going to take them uh, one at a time so the first of those is looks okay uh, and looks is important being compatible physically is extremely important nobody will deny that we live in a very I would say hypersexualized society where um, you know uh, desires and that which rouses the desires is presented just on a day-to-day -day basis and so um, at the time of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, he told us you know if one of you sees that which you know causes his desires to go up or if he sees from another woman etc then let him go home and let him go to his wife. Now, of course, a person will only be able to go to his wife if he finds her attractive. And so this is something which is really, really important is that we have compatibility physically. This is important because different people have uh, different preferences when it comes to looks, when it comes to a person's body, when it comes to uh, you know a general appearance everybody has that which they consider attractive and some people uh, would you know not consider what i find attractive to be attractive and maybe what they find attractive i wouldn't consider it to be attractive etc and that's fairly clear that's something which is fairly obvious um but this is something which is extremely important so you shouldn't just look at for example if a brother or a sister has you know a good dean and a good character but you find them physically repulsive or you're just not attracted to them then you again shouldn't consider that and you shouldn't go into a meeting or you shouldn't go forward what i mean to say you shouldn't proceed ahead without having first seen that person in fact you know we know at the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam there was a man who was getting married and the messenger of allah alayhi salatu wasalam asked that individual have you seen her and uh, the man said no. So the Prophet wasallam he commanded uh, the man to go and look at that woman. Okay. And I think more than ever now, it's extremely important living in that society, living in this, uh, you know, hypersexualized society, as I've said, that we need to find our spouses physically attractive. On this point, brothers and sisters, it's really important that we look after our, ourselves, uh, you know, both 
physically, mentally, in terms of deen as well. There's some people who totally let themselves go and they, uh, you know, they don't have a, a care in the world. These bodies which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, given to us, they are a blessing. And so it's upon us to look after them. Uh, and it's important, uh, you know, that we're not overeating and we're not just becoming fat slobs. What I mean by that is because of our overeating, we're just becoming massively overweight, massively unfit. And we are just becoming like a slob who just sits there all day long. That's not what we uh, should do. And that is gluttony. That is haram. And the Prophet ﷺ said that the, uh, the, the children of Al, the son of Adam, does not fill any vessel worse than his stomach. And it's enough for him a few morsels to keep his back upright, meaning to give him strength and sustain him by the permission of Allah. But if he must, then a third for his food, a third for his uh, water or his drink, and a third for his air, his breathing, okay? So that's a sunnah which we all need to do. So brothers, sisters, look at one another, look at your spouse, make sure that you are uh, physically compatible. This is important. And if somebody says to me, brother, I don't find this person uh, attractive, then honestly I say to them, look, don't marry that person because physical attraction is really important. That's obvious, okay? So there's another type of attraction which I want to speak about and that is family uh, compatibility. Sorry, not attraction, family compatibility. Often we only, we only ever look at compatibility between two people, but what we forget is that, of course, two families are coming together. And so it's really important to look at family compatibility. Uh, and this is why, uh, you know, some of our Arab brothers and sisters, their family only wants uh, an Arab okay and so that is again you know if for example a brother comes and everything is good about him except that he's not an Arab then again you know we really shouldn't be turning that person down but one of the reasons why the elders do request somebody from a similar area is that so that the family values will be fairly similar and the family values will match again I'm not saying that this is something that is okay or something that we should do but there is an element of uh, there is an element of wisdom behind it so that they understand that two families are coming together. If we have, you know, two families of vastly different cultures, sometimes it can be a problem. Alhamdulillah, uh, in terms of the newer generation, less and less it's becoming a problem, you know, and, and that is something that we, uh, you know, we should look at. Are the families compatible? But as for this, you know, an Asian should only marry an Asian and an Arab should only marry an Arab, a white should only marry a white. This is batil, it has no, uh, it has no uh, place in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but the different cultures, they should be uh, given consideration uh, and they, you know, they, they should be weighed up that are these two cultures going to be, uh, you know, compatible because um, sometimes we do find marriages where uh, compatibility uh, between the families is a problem and then the woman is alienated and the man is alienated, just becomes a mess. So this is something to look into. The third thing, uh, brothers and sisters, is wealth. Okay, this is important. Now, if a woman has had a particular upbringing throughout her life, if she's had a particular standard, let's say she's had, she comes from a wealthy family, her father is wealthy, and he's provided her with a particular standard of living. She has enjoyed a particular set of uh, privileges throughout her life it's extremely important for the sister to realize and understand that her new husband he may not be able to provide that and if she is looking for that you know that same set of privileges she has to make sure that she married marries a man who has a particular level of wealth I often come across sisters who they've enjoyed like I said they've enjoyed it their way they've enjoyed it you know the way their father has provided for them but then their husband you know can't necessarily give them the same things and then they expect the same things because they were unrealistic because they were immature in their approach it causes problems and the man is like look you knew that I wasn't as 
wealthy as your father you knew that i couldn't provide you with the things that your father has provided you with you knew that i couldn't take you on holiday twice a year or provide you with a big massive house etc we're going to be renting whatever and um, this is for sisters in particular to uh, you know to know about and also for brothers to make sure that they are clear when they get married they are clear about what they can provide and they uh, they leave the sister under no doubt and no illusion that she's going to get something which she ultimately doesn't so wealth is important okay wealth is something that needs to be looked at the fourth thing uh, brothers and sisters in terms of compatibility is character okay character is really important because there everybody has different characters you may have a for example i'm going to give you some characters that don't match okay you may have a loud sister uh, who wants it her way and you may have a loud brother with an overpowering um, with an overpowering personality who wants it his way if you put these two individuals together they're going to clash okay you may have a uh, a brother with a fast tongue and a sister with a fast tongue if you put them two together they're going to clash you may have a sister who's very very sensitive and a brother who isn't very sensitive and he just says whatever comes to his mouth the likelihood is that he is going to massively hurt this woman because he doesn't think much he's quite thick-skinned and the and the woman is very very sensitive so the things that are going to be said again this is a personality clash or this is going to cause conflict often the uh, the best uh, you know but at the same time what i what i mean by this is um often the best uh, personalities are those which are opposites so they have opposite characteristics but they also have a common ground between them so when it comes to opposite characteristics you might have a sister who is more shy and you have a brother who is more overpowering and so the sister is happy for to take a back seat and the brother is the one who is going to be making the decisions etc he's going to have the lead role or you may have a brother who is a uh, you know who is fairly quiet and likewise you may have a sister who is fairly quiet again just because they're similar doesn't mean they're necessarily going to clash they may be they may be absolutely fine with that you may have a uh, brother who is happy for his wife to dominate and then you have a sister who you know uh, wants to wear the trousers you know whatever floats your boat but compatibility is really really important in terms of character not only in terms of character, Ikhwani Fillah, but in terms of the things that you like as well. In terms of the, the hobbies and the pastimes, they don't have to be the same. Nobody's saying that you have to find somebody who likes everything that you like. But there has to be an ability to have a conversation with people. And on this note, you know, a lot of the youth in today's day, they are socially illiterate. What I mean by that is... If you were to have a WhatsApp conversation with one of them, it's absolutely fine. But put the phones down and try to have a face to face conversation. They fail. They're mumbling. They don't know what to say. They don't know how to word things. They don't know how to portray themselves, how to carry themselves. That's because social interactions now face to face are really going down. And it's all just done over a screen. So when it comes to screen conversation, they're absolutely fine. When it comes to face to face conversation, they are absolutely feeble. So you need to make sure that you have a uh, you need to make sure that you have compatibility in that regard. Also, with regards to compatibility in this way, um, I want to uh, you know speak about something which is really important. And, and I speak of me about you know about myself. So I'm a person who doesn't like typing. So I'm a person who, when it comes to you know WhatsApp and things like this, I'm a person who doesn't like typing. Now, if I was to marry somebody who constantly wants to try and have WhatsApp conversations with me, it's going to uh, it's going to get on my nerves. OK, and, I, and I'm not going to do it. I'm, you know, I don't like just sitting there tapping on the screen. I, I'm, I'm the type of guy to pick up the phone and actually have a physical conversation with somebody. So if there's a brother like that, he shouldn't marry a sister who who conveys herself through the, the typing. Because, for example, when it comes to typing, I come across as very abrupt, very blunt and just bang, bang, bang and just bullet point. And that's the way that I type. OK, but were you to have that same conversation with me face to face or were you to have that same conversation with me over the phone, you'd find that it would be very, very different. So 
again, these things are important. These things are things that people don't, you know, necessarily look into. And so there's times where, you know, I'll say to a person, listen, don't WhatsApp me. If you want to talk to me, ring me. I'm not, I'm not going to have this WhatsApp conversation or I'm not discussing this via WhatsApp or WhatsApp is not the right place. And we are at a time and a stage where sadly WhatsApp, it has to be mentioned in terms of marriage. What I mean by that is, you know, uh, we all use text messaging, WhatsApp, etc., iMessage, whatever it is. And so there is an adab and there's an etiquette and there's a mannerism to using these types of things. I'm of the I'm of the school that you just don't use these things for anything other than, you know, just general messages. Can you get this? Can you pick this up, please? You know, blah, blah, blah. Thanks for this. And anything that needs to be discussed, I don't have a discussion via, uh, via WhatsApp because it's just, you know, we're, we're going to clash and we're going to fall out. So again, these types of points, of, uh, these are very nuanced points. Maybe you wouldn't necessarily think about it, but these are very detailed, nuanced points. How am I going to discuss with this person? So when you go and you have that marriage meeting, sit down and gauge that person's conversational skills gauge their ability to convey and, and to communicate and converse with you and if they are not able to do that then again maybe there's not that much compatibility between you the fifth and final uh, point of compatibility which i wanted to speak about is deen okay is is religious compatibility this is extremely extremely important religious compatibility is extremely important okay because you can have two people who say that they are Salafi. You can have two people who claim that they want to follow the way of the Salaf as Salih, but they are religiously incompatible. They are incompatible religi religiously, okay? So you need to make sure, number one, I'll give you, I'm just gonna give you an example, okay? Of religious compatibility. I am a man, I want a woman who wears niqab and she considers it to be wajib or at the very least she's doing it herself and she's not going to do it for me. And uh, yeah, I mean she's not putting that niqab on for me, but she is doing it and she's doing it for herself for the sake of Allah because the last thing that I want is uh, you know to marry this woman and she says, "Well actually I don't want to wear the niqab, I don't want to cover my face, etc." because for me this is a this is a this is a deal breaker. Okay, and so I'm just giving you an example here of religious compatibility. Maybe the sister says, you know, from from the dean, uh, from her opinion is that, the, and, and the opinion, the correct opinion that she follows is that a man must have the full beard and he should not, you know, trim his or shave his beard, etc. So this is religious compatibility. Maybe the person says he's Salafi, but he doesn't have a full beard or he's somebody who trims his beard right down, etc. Religious compatibility is extremely, extremely important. Religious compatibility. Maybe the woman is a woman who wants to go, you know, every every uh, weekend wants to be eating out at a restaurant, wants to be going to the cinema, wants to be going, uh, you know, uh, wherever it is. And the man is of a slightly different op opinion, a slightly different approach. Maybe while the man is going off out to work, the woman is somebody who wants a lot of freedom so she can be going out. And as long as I'm home when you're home, I don't, you know, I don't need to remain in the house. I can go and I can do whatever I like as long as by the time you come home at six o'clock, I'm at home. That's maybe the woman, that's her level of deen. Maybe that's the le her level of understanding. But then maybe that's going to clash. And so all of these things are really important. When it comes to religious compatibility as well, you know, it's important to look at a person and say, right, okay, uh, what understanding do you take of Salafiyah? Because there are people who take an understanding of Salafiyah, but yet they... They just say, you know what, we should all call ourselves Muslims and, you know, we shouldn't call, you know, become sects and we shouldn't divide ourselves. And, you know, they'll, they'll use ayat and they'll use a hadith and stuff, but they haven't understood the correct application. Well, that's their understanding of that application. Now, for me to consider that person, that would be a major problem because I'm of the opinion that we have to divide ourselves so that the truth is clear from the falsehood because... You know, everybody calls themselves Muslims, the Shia, you know, the, the Qadiani, the Naqshbandi, the Diobandi. All of them say, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Muslim, I'm a Sunni, etc. And from them, there are those who their innovation takes them outside of the fold of Islam. So again, this is religious compatibility. When it comes to religious compatibility, 
you have to ask, you know, who are the people that you listen to? Who do you take knowledge from? Maybe that person is a person who says that they're Salafi, yet they're taking knowledge from somebody who is upon the path of the Khawarij or is upon the manhaj of the Ikhwan al Muslimin. So, again, this type of religious compatibility is extremely important, is extremely important. And when it comes to this religious compatibility, brothers and sisters, my heartfelt, my heartfelt advice to you is don't try and change somebody. Don't marry somebody, you know, don't consider a sister and say, right, you know, uh, I'm going to give you a no-no situation. This is a no-no situation, okay? So a brother considers a sister. <laughs> And the sister is not wearing niqab or she's new to wearing the niqab or she's not wearing it, let's say. And the brother says, look, I want a wife who wears the niqab. And she says, yeah, you know what? No problem. I've been looking for somebody to, uh, you know, uh, help me with that. So she starts to wear the niqab, you know, during the consideration process. And then they get married. This is a no-no. And again, I'm just using a superficial niqab, something like this. But this is a no-no situation because that sister is wearing the niqab for him. Okay? Because the reality of the situation is had she been, you know, wear, wanting to wear it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, she would have been wearing it herself. And this whole thing of, yeah, I'm always, I've always looked for somebody to help me, etc. Eventually that niqab is going to come off. Okay, because it's going to be a something which she does and she links it with this individual tomorrow if they have an argument or they separate for a period of time or they're not speaking, etc. That is going to be the first thing which she removes. The first things that she removes and she stops doing are the things that she did for you or the things that she did for the man. Likewise, when it comes to the beard, a brother says, oh, yeah, you know what? The sister's looking for a uh, um, you know, a man with a full beard, so he grows a full beard. This is a no-no, no-no situation because he should have had a full beard in the first place. So, uh, you know, if I was to summarize this point, I would say find somebody who is where you want them to be today and don't find somebody who you think can you can get them to where you want them to be tomorrow. Because number one, even if they do get to where you want them to be tomorrow, often that change is not permanent because often it's not for the sake of Allah, number two. Number one. Number two, what if you don't get them? What if they don't move to where you want them to be tomorrow? Then you're stuck with a person who is not what you wanted. You're stuck married to a man or a woman who you thought you could change or you thought you would change. Uh, and subhanAllah, uh, you know, now they're not, they're not changing. And, you know, one of the worst extremes, one of the worst examples of this is when you have a sister who's getting old and, you know, a man comes along who is upon, you know, he's a he's a Sufi deal, Bundy, but you know what? He looks OK and he has an OK job. And because the sister's getting old, she just considers him for marriage. And the thing is, you know what? He's deal, Bundy. I'm Salafi or I'm Ahlul Hadith. And, you know, he'll change and, you know, we can grow and we can adapt. This is one of the worst things that you can do. Compromising on the aqidah is one of the worst things that you can do. I had somebody again ask me, uh, you know, oh, the majority of people in India are Deobandi. Is it okay for me to marry a Deobandi? No way is it okay for a person who can sit, who is upon the way of the Salaf al-Salih, upon the way of, you know, uh, Ahlul Hadith, to go marry a Deobandi and you're marrying them shows that you haven't understood Salafiya and you're marrying them understood that, uh, you know, is a proof and an evidence that you haven't grasped and the uh, importance of the correct Aqeedah hasn't taken root in your heart. So brothers and sisters, don't marry somebody with the intention of changing them. Likewise, when it comes to compatibility, I think that you have to, uh, you know, when it comes to deen and that type of thing, is your level of knowledge, okay? Now, what I mean by that is, if you have a brother who is uh, not very knowledgeable, and you have a sister who is very knowledgeable, or has more knowledge than that, then is that knowledge going to be something which brings them together, or is it going to be something which uh, splits them further apart? This is again something which needs to be considered. So, you know, all of these things, there has to be some level of uh, compatibility when it comes to your looks, when it comes to 
uh, you know, your family and the, and the culture and the tradition of your family. Tradition and culture, what I mean by that is when it doesn't contradict the book and the sunnah, then there's no problem with tradition. A compatibility in terms of wealth, that you both know what you're getting yourself in for. The man knows this is a woman who may be, you know, slightly higher maintenance when it comes to money because she's grown up around money. Or the woman knows this is a man who's not going to be able to give me what my father gives me. So I'm happy to make that sacrifice financially when it comes to uh, character that the people uh, they are you know compatible in terms of character this is a difficult one in, in, in reality because you're never truly going to know somebody's character until you are living with them and you're married to them but you'll get an idea you'll get an idea you know if, if uh, you know I, I always uh, take as a very good uh, thing is you know if you're speaking with somebody and they just they keep cutting you off or they keep speaking over you, or they keep wanting to get their uh, opinion heard, and they and they are hasty in their speech, then you'll get an idea of this person. Whereas if somebody's laid back, listens, 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 and then gives a measured response, then you know this person is a bit more mature, is a bit more cool, calm, collected, and is not just going to uh, you know rush over you. Then how does that translate when you have an argument or you have a disagreement? Is that person who always wants to have their point heard, then that person's going to be the one who's shouting. That person's going to be the one who's raising their voice. That person's going to be the one who is, you know, uh, carrying on with the argument and is reciprocating the argument. Whereas the one who listens and ponders and collects is the person who is less likely to argue back. It's the person who's less likely to, you know, get into big arguments with you. So just these little things, you just have to be sensitive to you know, how the conversation is going and don't let your uh, your excitement to get married and your excitement to be with this person, don't let that overcome and don't let that make you ignore the potential warning signs. These are some extremely important things, uh, brothers and sisters, which, you know, um, I wish that, uh, you know, I, I would have known and I wish that I could have looked into, I wish that you know, there was, <clears throat> I wish that these things were more available and I wish that people who are newly getting married or they're considering, I wish they told these types of things because, you know, at, at an early stage it's easy to walk away but then once you're married it becomes a lot more difficult and you have to then deal with the problems and you have to deal with the conflicts and sadly a lot of brothers and sisters, this is what they're going through, you know, they, they were uh, hasty or they didn't look into the warning signs and so that's really, really important that we we take heed of these things uh, before we, uh, you know, before we rush and before we jump into marriage. Also, in terms of compatibility as well, I think compatibility on the wedding day, because believe it or not, there are some marriages which they are fully agreed everything. And then when it comes to the wedding day, uh, they fall out and, and they don't go, you know, go ahead. And this is you know, two occasions where you're going to see if a person is a person of the sunnah is on the wedding day and is on the funeral day. So weddings and funerals, these are two places where you can see if a person is truly a person of the sunnah because, uh, or are they a person who just follows their whims and follows their desires? Because if there's somebody who follows their whims and follows their desires, then they are, uh, then they are going to make excuses. They're going to have you know, free mixing, dancing, photographers, all of these different things. So they're going to compromise on what's halal and what's haram. They're going to compromise just because of that day. They're going to compromise, oh, because it's a special day. But if somebody is truly clinging to the sunnah, then they're going to hold on to the sunnah, even if it means, you know, not having the, their dream day, or they're going to, comp you know, they're not going to compromise on the sunnah, and they, and they understand that this means more baraka in my marriage. Likewise, when it comes to, now let me give you, let me give you an example now. Uh, you know, you get married and you're, you know, you're considering a woman, you do, you know, everything is fine. And then when it comes to marriage, then she has like all these crazy rituals beforehand, uh, you know, a lot of um, Asian rituals and indeed African, uh, you know, rituals and, uh, you know, uh, uh, even the white people have crazy rituals from, from these areas. And, you know, for example, uh, the beating of the drums, not the duff, the beating of the drums. When it comes to the Asians, then they do all of these crazy Hindu rituals. When it comes to people in this area in Europe, you know, largely Caucasian type rituals, 
they uh, they release doves and they believe that these doves are uh, you know being released and it's good luck and all of these things so you see all of these different traditions are uh, you know uh, basically founded upon shirk and founded no doubt they are uh, you know innovations uh, so it's extremely uh, important that we ask and look at these things beforehand because imagine you consider you you know you're thinking that this woman is really on it and then when it comes time to actually get married she's doing all of these crazy rituals she's doing all of these crazy things and then you're thinking hang on a minute you know this is all contrary to the sunnah then you you're getting an idea now this is a person who doesn't truly follow the sunnah so discussing these things uh, beforehand brothers and sisters is key it is critical and you don't need nobody's pushing you to move forward this is really important that nobody's pushing you to commit to marry anybody nobody's pushing you you know nobody can force you to get married to a person who you don't want to get married to nobody can you know force you into a situation and so uh, you know sisters don't feel any pressure if you start to realize that actually you know what i wanted a man with ghayra i want a man with ghayra meaning protective jealousy um so you know what when it comes to when it comes to that this dude is okay with his brothers and his and his and his uncles and his and his cousins coming into the wedding hall and he wants me to take pictures on the stage Khalas, and that that's an indication that this man he doesn't have any protective jealousy over your uh, your um your your women his women folk so then again just walk away so it's better brothers and sisters in other words to discuss all of these things and that's why it's not always possible and it's not always realistic and wise and in fact it isn't realistic and wise to get married after one meeting or to get married after two meetings these are things which take time to ponder time to reflect over time to just simmer and uh, you know, uh, for you to think about and for you to reflect, go home when your head's on the pillow and think, you know what, he said that, she said that, you know what, okay, that's something I need to get clarified, something I need to look into, you know, if somebody, for example, comes now and says, I listen to Mufti Menk, or I listen to Nu'man Ali Khan, or I listen to Yasir Qadi, then the person who says I'm a Salafi, or I'm a person who is following the way of the Salaf of this Ummah, that person shouldn't then marry an individual like that because that is an individual who clearly doesn't have knowledge of these things. Now, if you don't mind and you're happy to teach that person and that person accepts and they leave, you know, once you tell them about the issues with such speakers and they leave it, alhamdulillah. But if a person says, no, you know, for example, I'm going to take the good and I'm going to leave the bad, that's going to cause problems for you in your marriage moving forward. That's going to cause issues and and the deen will actually be something which splits you apart and the deen will be something which causes potentially divorce because it has come between you and your husband so all of these things these are little issues but they all add up okay so when we are looking for uh compatibility all of these things need to be looked at so as i said compatibility in terms of looks in terms of family in terms of wealth in terms of character and in terms of deen as well okay and all of that, uh, brothers and sisters, is really important. Uh, you know, ultimately, look, divorce is something which occurs. Divorce is something which is halal. As for the statement, you know, or the saying which people say that, you know, divorce causes the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shake. This is not correct. This is not authentic. Uh, there's no sahih hadith which has a similar meaning to this. Uh, and, you know, divorce is the most hated of things to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the halal things, divorce is the most hated of those things. Again, there's no evidence for that. Divorce can become wajib. Divorce can become beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you have a person who is an evil doer, doesn't pray, etc. And that woman is a woman who's practicing and she is a righteous woman and he's just holding her you know, uh, hostage or is holding her captive in the marriage. Divorce is something which is a blessing in this situation. Divorce is a good thing. Or you have a woman who essentially gives a man a choice. You choose between the deen, you either practice the religion and you don't have me, or you have me, but I don't want you to practice the religion. I want you to shave off your beard, etc. So in that situation, the man, he needs to take off this, uh, you know, this donkey from around his neck. And that is a massive blessing. So deen can be a, uh, sorry, so divorce can be a, massive blessing 
Um, in terms of, you know, somebody asked, um, you know, how much should a person compromise? This is a good question. How much should a person compromise? I would say when it comes to deen, you shouldn't compromise. I would say, uh, you know, uh, when it comes to deen, you shouldn't compromise. Okay. Um, as for, uh, you know, wealth, you can compromise. As for a person's uh, education, then you can compromise. As for, you know, uh, maybe looks, then you may be able to compromise. But don't compromise to a level which... Uh, you know uh, you're gonna be put off that person or you're just not gonna be attracted don't do it but what I will say brothers and this is specifically for the brothers okay is that if you have two women and one woman is extremely beautiful but in terms of her deen she is slightly lacking but the other woman is less beautiful and, and she is less attractive by a fair you know by a good amount but in terms of her deen, in terms of her character, she's she's up, she's on it. I would say to you a hundred times out of a hundred, marry the one who has deen and character. And this is exactly why the Prophet Sallallahu he told us that marry the one with the deen. Okay? Because brothers, look, looks they come and they go. And looks, they're not going to, you know, sustain your marriage. I promise you, Wallahi, looks will not sustain your marriage and you know the looks there'll be that initial spark but you know what once her mouth starts running or once you know she's not wearing the correct hijab once she is uh you know it, it, you know she's in a she's uh you know she's you know in a state of tabarruj where she's just openly displaying her beauty wallahi that beauty you'll hate it it won't become something which will be nice or pleasing to you you will hate it and that and that look those good looks will be something which causes a crisis in your marriage so please don't don't choose the one who has looks and so that's why i said to the i say to the brothers listen when it comes to uh, looks looks will give you that first 10 percent but then you know what if her character's lacking she might only get you to the end goal of let's say 30 40 percent but let's say that other one you know what out of looks out of 10 she, she's only a five okay you've got that five percent but then you know her character will give her 70 percent so it'll take her out of 75 percent give get her to 75 out of 100 but that one who had good looks her looks were only propelled her to 10 and in the end her character was only worth 20 i mean i'm just giving you a score i'm not you know uh, you know uh, reducing our sisters to a score of 100 but i'm just giving you an example here so the one who has looks and bad character, she might be a 30 out of 100. But the one who has a good character and good deen, but slightly lacking in the looks department, she'll still get to 75. She might still get to 80 because of the because of the character and because of the deen. So just be just be far sighted and don't be short sighted and think with your head. Think with your head. Don't just think with your desires. You know, don't think with your desires. This is extremely important. Okay, um, so when it comes to Dean, I wouldn't compromise. As for these other things, I uh, I would say, you know what, find where you're comfortable and nobody can come and say there's a right answer or a wrong answer. Find where you're comfortable and compromise to that to that level. Um, one of the brothers, I think, that mentioned about, oh, I thought that Shaitan crowns the one, etc. No. So Shaitan places his, 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 his throne is on water, uh, on the sea. Um, and the shayateen they come and they report back to him and they basically mention uh, you know what they've caused a man to do so this one says you know i caused a man to commit zina i've caused a man to commit murder i've caused a man to take interest i've caused a man to do x and y and z and one of them comes and says i stayed with a man and i caused him to divorce his wife then shaitan he says to that one as for you then you come and then he sits him on his throne besides him or something similar like this in other words he raises him because of what he's caused uh, a man to do okay and that is obviously because of the destroying of the families and, and the fitna that it brings and the, and the heartache and the issues and the problems etc so that's what that's the uh, authentic hadith in that regard um somebody asks 
Um, would you recommend someone to remain single due to fear of falling into haram in the wedding day or not being able to find the right person? Listen, the reality is, is that you're never ever going to know, is this person 100% the right person for me until you've been married to them for a certain period of time? Ultimately, there's always going to be a question mark. Okay? And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِذَا أَزَمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ Once you've decided and you've taken a, an affair, then put your tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's always going to be a matter of unknown. Imagine, you know, you see something from the front and there's a big portion of it, you know, the rest of it you, you can't see until you marry that person. And so when it comes to uh, these types of things, brothers and sisters, you know what I would say, look at what is apparent, do your research, do your homework, ask around about this person, don't rush into it, etc. You know, all the things that we've mentioned. And then you have to put your trust in Allah. As for, you know, would I say to a person, oh, out of fear of that, don't get married. No, because then none of us would ever get married. Out of, you know, if it's a fear of maybe I'll do something haram on the wedding day. No, because then none of us would ever get married. So you have to do your best. You have to do your best. And that is why when the man said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, oh, Messenger of Allah, shall I tie my camel or shall I have tawakkul? Shall I tie my camel? Meaning, imagine you dismount your camel, you're going somewhere now, and you're in the middle of the desert. Shall I tie my camel up, or shall I just have tawakkul in Allah that Allah will keep this camel, uh, yani, will keep this camel safe? The Prophet of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam, said, tie your camel and then have tawakkul in Allah. So the point being is, we have to take the means. You have to go out and look and try and get married and do everything, and then put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa taala. That's extremely important. Um, somebody says, what about a woman if she hasn't found a man with the same level in terms of deen? As a man is a leader, he should be better in many, many aspects instead of women. One thing I will say is that in, uh, in men need to have characteristics of leadership. Okay, The man is the Amir, but the problem that we have today is that our men are bums. They don't have characteristics of leadership. Okay, so they don't have characteristics of leadership. They don't know how to, if you were to give them, uh, you know, a party of men or if you were to give them, you know, just themselves, he can't lead himself, let alone leading another person. And so this is where we have to make our sons men. We have to give them responsibilities. We have to teach them leadership skills. We have to give them, uh, you know, a feeling of responsibility, etc., etc. But the youth of today... In reality, and many of the men, in reality, they don't have that ability to lead. But does that mean that we shouldn't get married? No. Keep looking, keep making dua. Eventually, you'll find somebody bi ta'ala. Even if he's not massively knowledgeable, if he, if he knows the basics of the deen, the basics of the correct aqidah, the basics of salafiyya, the basics, etc. But he has good character, then inshallah, that will be sufficient bi idnillahi tabaraka wa ta'ala. Um, somebody asks, worst ever because I'm not looking into the background. My got into marriage the other day, caused a lot of problems. Each practice found their own way and compromises a lot now. So that's why, uh, brothers and sisters, it's really important look into the religion, uh, look into <coughs> look into the persons uh, who they are, which masajid uh, they uh, attend, uh, who is their favorite speaker, who do they seek knowledge from, etc. You'll get a lot from that, and also look, you know. Uh, I, I, when I say spy, I don't mean it in a in this type of way. I mean, look at who this person is following on social media. Look at who they're commenting on and, and, and the things that they're liking and the things that they're sharing. You'll get a good understanding of their deen. Uh, somebody said, what if the brother has extreme anger? Again, extreme anger, you know, uh, this, is a, uh, this is a cowardly thing in reality because if you were to place a man in front of that man, his anger would die down. But when you place a, you know, a, a vulnerable woman, then he has problems with extreme anger. This is not extreme anger in reality. This is just this man, uh, you know, uh, throwing his weight around uh, and, and being a coward. And, uh, you know, uh, when it comes to it, then he says, oh, I have extreme anger. No, this is not extreme anger. This is cowardice in, in reality. Um, what is a good time frame for the talking phase? Again, how long is a piece of string? You know, it, it's it's difficult. 
But I would say look after, you know, two, three, four meetings. You should have a good idea as to what this person is upon in terms of deen, da, da, da. It needs to be clear. If it's not clear, then that would be alarm bell ringing in my in my head. There would be alarm bells ringing in my head if it wasn't clear. And, and you know what? Uh, this is something which I've been, uh, you know, trying to help out certain sisters get married, etc. So I've been the third person in conversations, telephone conversations, etc. I've just remained silent and let them to speak. And I've just been the referee, if you like. And, you know, I've, I've heard people backtracking. I've heard people say certain things. And then the sister says, well, actually, that's not what I want. Then the man says, oh, no, 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 I don't mean that. I mean this. Or I've heard a man say, this is what I'm looking for. Or, or the woman say something and the man said, that's not what I'm looking for. So then, the, you know, the woman says, no, 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 but I mean this. And I, so people are backtracking and they're backtracking to tell the other person what they want them to hear. This is a shady characteristic. And then at the end of that conversation, I'll say to whoever it is, listen, I think you need to be careful here because that person has clearly backtracked and they've clearly tried to tell you what you want to hear. And for me, that is a worrying trait and a worrying sign. And so these types of things you've got to be careful of. Don't don't give them leading, don't lead them on and don't give them easy questions. You want to know, who do you listen to full stop? Give me names. And if he doesn't listen to anybody, well then how do you actually, who do you take your knowledge from? Which books are you reading? Full stop. And you know, if he's reading Harry Potter and he's not reading books of, of Islam, then again, you've got a, a, an idea of this person's level. Uh, you know, uh, what do you do in your, in your free time? Full stop. And let the person speak because the more they move their tongue and the more they open their mouth, the more they're painting for you a picture of themselves, a picture of their personality, a picture of their deen, a picture of their, their level, etc. So don't ask silly questions. Oh, brother, would you prefer to listen to Sheikh Saleh Fawzan or, uh, you know, Nu'man Ali Khan? This is a stupid question. OK, just ask them open ended general questions and let them do the talking. And if they're not willing to give out a lot, I would be concerned. I would say, you know what, why is it that you're not clear? Why is it that you're not showing me clearly who you are and what you're about? So these things are extremely uh, important. When it comes to how to avoid photos on the wedding day, this is an issue of who are you inviting to your wedding? Are you inviting Juhal and uh, you know all of this and and me personally i don't do i don't agree with this whole thing of you know the wife should be caked up and she should be sat on a stage for 200 women to be looking at potentially taking pictures undercover giving her ain giving her the evil eye and you know causing problems and 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 gossiping and backbiting she is that's her wedding day you know and and she should enjoy it so let's get close people close family members a small gathering and let them enjoy it in a closed party which is halal and you can control everybody and you can leave a basket and at the front and say every single one of you put your phones in your basket in the basket and, and khalas, leave it at that. When you've got 200 people, you're going to put 200 phones in a basket. I'm just giving you a practical uh, example of what I'm talking about here. That when it's small, it's manageable. You can call the people that you know will be truly happy, bi'idhnillah, that will, that will say Allahumma barik and make dua for you. And you're not just going to cause people, call people who are just going to give you the evil eye and they're just going to, you know, uh, uh, talk bad about you. Um... Uh, in terms of how about making either party take an internet personality test to assess compatibility, I don't know of any of these, to be honest. I don't know what these are about, okay? I don't know what these are about. Um, how do you know if your marriage is just bad or if problems or a punishment for being for not being the best Muslim, okay? The the first thing, okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِنْ مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَيَعْفُوا عَنْ كَثِيرٍ that whatever of calamity befalls you, then it's because of what your own hands have sent forward. And yet Allah forgives much as well. So Allah's not punishing you for all of your sins, but the sins which you are committing, the problems which are in your life, the calamities, because of your own sins. And you know the Salaf, they, the Salaf of this Ummah, they would say that whenever we committed a sin, we would see the effects of that sin in our wives and in our riding beasts. 
okay so when i committed a sin i come home now and my family is not listening to me and they're arguing and my car's got problems etc the salaf of this ummah they would say that i would see the effects of my sin in my the, in the people of my home and also in my riding animal so that's our families our kids etc and also our uh, you know our uh, our cars etc so the point being is that sins have a very tangible effect effect on our lives sins have a very tangible effect on our lives but that doesn't necessarily mean that the issues in your marriage are only because of sins there may just be a very real lack of compatibility there may be a very real personality clash or personality problem or a dean problem or a you know or a character problem etc and and you know what i, I would say is I am also a very strong proponent for mediation, getting you know somebody to mediate between families, and also going for counselling. There's no harm and there's no shame and there's no uh, issue in going for you know family counselling and that type of thing if you truly are on the same page, but you've just got some problems. If one person's dean is one and one person's dean is the other, there's no point going for counselling because counselling won't help that. But if your deen is the same and your outlook is the same, your goals are the same, but you've still got these issues, go for counselling. Because that's the type of marriage that is worth saving. Uh, somebody says, I've emailed the marriage service. Yes, please forgive me. I haven't had a chance to look at it. Forgive me. Um, advice for divorced women who have trust issues, so remain unmarried. You know, subhanAllah, um, as they say, you know, once bitten, twice shy. Not all men are the same. Many men are the same, but not all men are the same. And naturally, there's going to be trust issues. It might The same thing happens for brothers as well. A brother might be married to a conniving and plotting and evil woman. And so now he doesn't trust women. He's put off women, for example. A brother might have a uh, might have been through a very toxic relationship, likewise with a sister. So it works both ways. But one thing I would say is that, look, um, you know, in uh, Surah Al-Talaq, which is the Surah of, of Divorce, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, you know, after talking about Talaq and Divorce, etc., Allah Jalla Wa Ala, He mentions, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا This is where these ayat come. That whoever has taqwa of Allah, keeps their duty to Allah, is conscious and fearful of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Allah will give them a way out from any dif difficult, from every difficulty. يحتسب, and Allah will provide for them from where they didn't imagine. Allah, and whoever has tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will suffice him. So after talking about divorce and that type of thing, these ayat are mentioned there. Okay? So when you go after divorce, when you've come out of divorce and you're in this issue, Put your have number one, keep your duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Put your trust and your reliance in Allah Jalla wa ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will suffice you and Allah will provide you with that which is better. And uh, you know, uh, there are various du'as which you can mention in the fortress of a Muslim, you'll find them there as well. You know, when you've gone through a calamity, etc., what to say and things like that, you'll find them the Ibn Allah. These uh, brothers and sisters are tests and they're trials, and you know what? life doesn't always end up rosy you know we all we all have a concept of marriage oh i'm going to get married and i'm going to live happily ever after and you know i'm going to i don't know i'm going to uh, sit down uh, after salah and i'm going to make the tasbih on my wife's fingers and you know all of that and all this romantic rubbish and then when you get married you actually realize it's not a bed of roses and it's actually very difficult and maybe your marriage will fail <laughs> maybe you might get married two times three times four times five times and you know what I would say to a person? Keep going. Keep trying. Don't lose hope. Uh, and, and you know what? Just keep, uh, you know, having good thoughts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Keep trying to improve your own self. Be the best spouse that you can be. And, you know, don't don't let what has happened, don't let that get to you. Just keep moving forward. Be idhnillahi tabaraka wa ta'ala. Uh, so the sister asks, is you know, is it okay for there to be a group chat between the two people, so the man and the woman, with the sister's mother and her brother? Yeah, there's no problem. So as long as there's a mahram there, so you know, one thing that is really uh, odd and is haram, uh, without a shadow of a doubt, is when two people are 
uh, when two people are engaged now, they think that they can go out together, they think that they can, you know, have long drawn out conversations and they think that, you know, okay, because we're going to get married, it's okay now, we're basically uh, halal for one another. No, you're not. You can't sit together and have these types of conversations, etc. until you actually get married. So even if you're engaged, even if you've decided that, you know what, inshallah, we're going to get uh, married and this is the date, etc. Even still, <clears throat> there should be a third person present, her brother, her father, her uncle. Uh, you know, if, if, uh, if she doesn't have that, then you can go. Uh, you know, and get my, um, you can go and have her brother and her, her mother or just her mother, her, you know, whatever it is, an older auntie, etc. So you shouldn't be alone in this way. And there's no problem with having these types of uh, conversations, be it the ta'ala. But one would say that before you decided to get married, you would have really conversed about basically everything that you wanted to converse about. Um, and also one thing is I would, I would suggest is don't leave it, you know, really late. So don't say, okay, to now we're in April, for example. Okay, fine. Uh, you know what? We've had a meeting and we've had, you know, all of these meetings and we're happy. You know what? Okay, we're going to get married in September. Why are you leaving it five, six months? And this is five, six months where you're inevitably going to fall into fitna. You're going to be talking and Shaytan's going to be working on you both and, and, and you you're going to have temptations, etc. You're getting married. So clearly you find you've seen each other, you find each other attractive, etc. You've had conversations. So that's going to be building up as well. Uh, you know, your family might be lax as many of the families are in closing those doors. So they might say to you, you know, go and meet up with him and, and or you can come. And yani, subhanAllah, why open up that door? Why open up that door, brothers and sisters? If you want to get married and you've, you know, you've, you've had all those conversations, then try and do it as quickly as possible. Somebody might say, well, look, I'm studying. I'm at university, etc. blah, 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 blah. Who said you have to get married after you graduate? Who said you can't have a nikah and, and get married? Uh, you know, while you're still studying or while you're, you know, working or whatever it is, there's nothing which stops that. And it shouldn't be, uh, in you know, it shouldn't be, um, it shouldn't be something which stops you. Um, another uh, brother, he, he asked a question, uh, will Islam allow him to get married for the second time um, uh, without informing the existing wife? Please let me know. So, uh, will uh, so, Look, technically you don't need to tell your first wife. Technically you can go and you can get married and you don't need to tell your first wife. You don't need to ask for her permission. Would I recommend that? I think that was a really irresponsible thing to do in today's day. I think that was a really irresponsible thing to do and an unwise thing to do in today's day. There's no way you're going to be able to hide it forever except by lying and lying is haram. Okay, so there's no way you're going to be able to uh, hide that from your wife forever and when she does find out it's all gonna hit the fan and it's all gonna go all over your face so don't bother doing it okay it's better for you to have your first wife involved have her on side if she's not on side and she is not supporting you but at the same time she knows that's the best thing so at least she can prepare but imagine just randomly out out the blue you know she's going through your phone and she finds something or your second wife calls you while you're with her or something happens and you have to rush them. Don't do it, Akhi. Um, don't, don't, don't get married again without telling your first wife. It's not the wisest thing you can do, believe me. Um, so sister asks, what's your opinion of someone who gives talaq by text message? Do you think that they are serious about marriage? I don't think that you can say somebody based upon that is serious or not serious. I think that they, we have to look at the entire situation. Um, you know, and I think we have to look at context. There may be, for example, a, uh, I don't know. I, I don't, I'm, 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 let me just come up with an example now. Maybe there's been, you know, a huge amount of words exchanged and family meetings and things like this. And the talaq just needed to be finalized. So he can either email it or he can text it or he can write it down or he can, you know, say it, etc. So I don't, I'm not going to say, oh yeah, a person gave talaq by text message, but one thing I will say is that people who just give talaq just like that, you know, she burnt the toast. Okay, but you know, I'm divorcing you. I'm divorcing you. Okay. Or you, or you know, she, uh, I don't know. She, she, you know, she has a bit of a bad day and, and 
you know what he he I don't know he wants to have relations with her and 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 she doesn't want that or she's not ready for that or she's just not up for it or I don't know and and I'm just coming up with random, uh you know ran, random scenarios and so in that situation, I really wouldn't um you know for, for a person to go and just divorce her like that that's stupid that's stupid, um and you know like uh, this the type of statement oh look shall we just get divorced. Come on, divorce is not, uh, you know, something light. Marriage is not something light. It's not something that you pick up and put down. A woman is not something which you pick up and put down at will. And that shows an element of immaturity to me. Uh, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Brothers and sisters, I've only got five seconds left. Um, perhaps I'll come on again. Jazakumullahu khaira. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.